Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into the Homegrown Happy Hour podcast. Uh, and today we got the full band. This was a heck of a setup, but from left to right right here, starting off with Mr. Kenny Cantrell. He is the bass for the Pastime Band, sitting right beside him to his left. Yes, that is left. James Centers, the lead singer or mouth of the band, what we were calling him here before we mouth hopped on here. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then to uh, his left, we have Richie Potter, the guitarist, or also the beer provider he of is. the band, as we've been told. <laughs> <laughs> Most important title. <laughs> <laughs> and then sitting to his left, we have Mark Robinson, the keyboard player. How's it going, buddy? Yeah, it's going good. How are you doing? Doing good, man. Doing good. I'm yeah. glad we got to get you in here yeah, uh, this too. time. I know we didn't get in... In, in, in here last time, but welcome to the Pastime Band. I'm Thank probably you. the newest right. member. Yeah. How I long have was, you been in? It's probably well, it's close long enough to a year. I don't look both ways before I cross the road anymore. So <laughs> that tells you anything. <laughs> or always look both ways. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so uh, how long do you say you're in the band for now? Almost a year now, I guess. Yeah. Sounds like that. Well, yeah. you, you started off in the least busiest time. Oh, yeah. That's how we. That's how it all started. Uh, I was uh, basically furloughed from my job and uh, was helping Richie. And uh, we, we go back to the 80s playing music together. So we were talking about music, and he was playing me some of their original stuff. And I said, yeah. And he said, you still write? Because we wrote back in the 80s. And I said, yeah. And uh, I played him a couple songs, and we all just started playing with that and took it from there mm, i think i remember you talking about him last time yes. you were up here yeah okay that's starting to sound familiar now yeah. all right it what? worked out really good didn't it yeah it's cool. a hard life was the song that i brought to him and it's a good song too really good song <clears throat> by the way the uh b-side to that i guess is what y'all call it the elkhorn city song oh wow. there's like two tracks on that right right yeah but it, oh, man, the Elkhorn City—that's my favorite oh, song by y'all right now. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, I love it. Um, that up there came from me moving away to Minneapolis, Minnesota, one of the biggest cities in America. What made you move to Minneapolis? I worked for a national bank. Okay. And um, had a job opportunity to work at headquarters. It was headquartered up there. Oh wow! So I took the job, moved up there, realized real quick that I'm not cut out for the big city life. <laughs> yeah. That um, what, what what was about it that you didn't like? What well, made you realize the fact that? that no matter where I went, I never saw anyone that I knew. Mm. I'm used to passing five or six people on the road, you know, throwing my hand up, waving at them. Yeah. And and you don't do that up there. And it, believe it or not, something that small is what you miss. And so whenever mm. I decided that um, that backed with the weather, because who loves snow in May, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> the decided, temperatures are great, too. Oh, yeah, sure. yeah. Yeah, fantastic. The, the three months of summer out of the year you get is really beautiful. <laughs> but um, but decided to move back, uh, move back. Like we talked about, Kenny said, hey, you know, you want to sing some songs with us, blah, blah, blah. It happened. A um, few months later, me and Rich got together. You know, we wanted to write a song about Elkhorn City. So, so me and him sat down, and he was like, because I had, I had writer's block at that point. Yeah. He's like, well, what did you see? And I was like, big-ass buildings. He said, all right, write it down. It's really yeah. the way it right. went, Right, that's exactly like, how it went. Yeah. He had the idea. He just wasn't sure what he was going to say, and we almost did it like a question-answer. Right. I'd ask yeah. a question, he would answer it. When we got done, he had written and all the lyrics to this once song. Once it got to the just... point to the guy walking, like looking to smoke <laughs> some pot, we had to leave a name out. You know, we had like a specific <laughs> name <laughs> that we to say. But, but everybody we, there knew right. who he was talking about. But we figured for, for privacy purposes, we'd leave the name yeah, out. I said, James, yeah. we can't call anybody out. <laughs> yeah. So we just call him what's his name. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, it, yeah, it's all getting legal soon. Y'all be all yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, I was wondering why Minneapolis, that's out of all the big cities I've ever wanted to go to, that's not really on my list. What's there? What is in Minneapolis? Well, I mean, a so honestly, <laughs> is there any, like, what's the landmarks of that place? Well, the, the big landmarks is you got Minneapolis Culture Garden, and in the song Elkhorn City, you hear a cherry and a spoon. And so after the interview, and I'll show you um, a couple of pictures of it, it it's like one of the, the landmarks. When you go to Minneapolis, you have to go there. There's also Minnehaha State Park, which is, I mean, believe it or not, in the middle of a big city. Mm. It's beautiful, like, mm. trail area. And then you got Mall of America. Oh, Mall of America. Yeah, that's right. okay. I've that's where yeah. I've heard of Minneapolis. Which actually is from. in Bloomington and not in Minneapolis, which is just a little <laughs> south of the city. The only reason I know that is the uh 
I don't know if it was Jackass or Viva La Bam back in the day, but they went to the Mall of America. Yeah. I remember that episode. Right. Yep. And it's huge. And it's one of those places that you never go to except on a Tuesday night at like 8. It's the only time you go to <laughs> Mall of America. too busy there the rest of the day. Yeah, time. yeah I, I'm good, man. I just I can't deal with a big city. Driving through Coal Run is enough for me. Oh, like that that gets I'm my nerves through the... the... City. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but I just, I, I can't do it, man. It's, and, and you know, to each his own. I used to live in a very urban place where I, before I moved to this area. And whenever you come up to a place like this, I, some people like that busy city life. But I like just finding a mountaintop to go on top of, a sure, little strip sure. job or whatever, it, sure. and just hanging out for the evening. That's you know, our heaven. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like, you're away from everything. You don't hear a car. You don't hear anything. Just whatever music you brought along with you. And, and you know, and th- since you mentioned that, that's another thing, too. The lack of silence yeah. anywhere. And stars, too. Oh, yeah, you can't see them. Yeah. You can't. And, but, and for the most part, the state of Minnesota is basically, like, rural. You know, there's it's all farmland. But, you know, Minneapolis, St. Paul, the Twin Cities are like the the cash cow of the state. Now, you get out of there, you go up toward north toward Duluth. It's beautiful. It's all country land, no street lights, no busy shuffle. Yeah. But you still have the weather and you still have the people that, I mean, for the most part, my encounters were pretty good with the people. Yeah. But again, for the most part, I talk Southern. I talk different than they do. Did you ever get some crap for any of that? No, believe it or not, I didn't wow. get crap. I got... So as I was a banker for that bank, I was the top banker in the whole Twin Cities area for two quarters in a row, do nothing but my accent. They trust a Southern man. Ah. They do. Got that Southern bell That's voice. That's yeah. Right. Calling them ah. doll and honey, you know. It's just, just the, practicing the, everything that I get from gas stations, you know. Everyone calls you doll, baby, honey. Wait, did they, like, say that in the, like, little, the job Description or anything like? Did you have to call people like certain names? No, like no, no, names? I didn't have to. I was to. about to say that's wow, that's a little right. bit much. <laughs> no, yeah. no, I didn't have to do anything like that. But and you know, and and as far as calling them, that I really didn't. I just said it for you know. And that's goodness. why you said the first two quarters because by the third quarter they got to know you. Right, third quarter they were like, whoa, 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 hang yeah. on here. This guy's a little sketchy. <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's re-look at our accounts again. I'm still trying to figure out what he said there. Yeah. <laughs> we need some subtitles. <laughs> it, it's, it's a totally different way of talking, though. See, whenever I first moved up here, and I don't see this much. I only see this in, like, really country, country parts. But guys calling each other honey. Like, I've, I've heard that before, too. Really? Whenever I first moved up here, like, some dude, like, just like some, you know, uh, c- country brute guy, he called me honey. And I was like, I don't know about all that. <laughs> I mean, I work retail still here in Pikeville, and you've got these people that are your typical mountain men. Yeah. You know, the bibbed overalls, like the straw hat and all that good stuff. And they will call you honey. Yeah. The, see, the one I'm talking about, he <laughs> was, <laughs> yeah, he was yeah. Uh, up at the head <laughs> of a hauler, you know, same type of guy. Like, right. y- you have to find a really, really country dude. But, yeah, he'll call you honey. <laughs> just, just don't freak out. Don't freak out. Right. Ain't no broke back mountain stuff going on. It's <laughs> just it. he's up the head of a holler. He's all good. And you know what? It's twenty twenty one. Yeah, so, yeah. So whatever. even if it is right. Oh. Yeah, just just uh, politely decline. Or That's I don't it. know. That's it. Just <laughs> I, smile and nod. I don't know what I did. I, I don't think I. I don't even think I said anything. I was just kind of speechless. I'm like, what? Well, and it's also the first time I heard yeller. Oh yeah. It, yeah. It's just it was always yellow, but now it's yeller. Yeah, but, yeah, but I, well, that's, I like that it. Though, I, sound, just listen to yourself on a answering machine. See, well, whenever I first moved up here, I'm like, like people called me city folk, and now that I've listened back to little podcasts like this, yeah, I got that hillbilly twang, bub. Yeah. Well, it's like up there whenever I was working, they'd say, "So when you say yonder, what exactly are you meaning?" I'm like, yonder. Oh, there. <laughs> there. Yeah. And then they're like, what is that? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you spend more time trying to decipher what you're telling them yeah. where they can understand it than what you're actually working. And you were in Minnesota. Minnesota, they have don't min- you know? Yeah. Minnesota. You betcha. They have a weird way. That's like Canada, but not Canada. Right. Minnesota is it's weird. They're, aren't they on the borderline of Canada, too? Yep. So it's like the, one of the most northernmost states. You go all the way to the top of Minnesota, Canadian border. And then you got Fargo right there real close, you know. Fargo, North Dakota, <laughs> where the movie was made. 
<laughs> it's so good, man. How long were you up there? Uh, about three years. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense, man. Yeah. You had the accents down pat. That's it. Good. I'm like a chameleon. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Kenny, have you been to Las Vegas, man? What's the hat about? Uh, my son brought it back to me. <laughs> no, oh. I've not been. I, I get the shirts and the hats. You know. What, what, so, so what happens in Vegas stays in. Take trips and I have to babysit for them. Yeah. <laughs> so what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Besides hats. Besides hats. <laughs> and, and, and herpes. And herpes. <laughs> and herpes. And 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 whatever somebody got on a cell phone. The cell phone. Ex, the cell phone has really lightened the Vegas experience. Right. Yeah, that's a wild place out there, though. We man. just got yeah. back from Vegas, didn't we? Me and yeah. Mark did. Oh yeah, I remember. Yeah. I seen y'all's uh, yeah. Facebook so, photos. Yeah. Since you brought up Vegas, Rich and Jen renewed their vows at the Graceland Chapel. Twenty-five years. Tell them where the it. owner is from. Yeah, we got we got to the chapel <clears throat> and the guy. Goes, yeah, the guy says. Uh, <laughs> Wait, so you're like legit married by? Well, I know it's Elvis. Yeah, Elvis, renewed, like, it, was, it, was, it was somebody you know. dressed up like Elvis. Yes. yes. That's so uh-huh. cool, So he, man. he's like, where are y'all from? And we said, Kentucky. And he said, well, what part of Kentucky? And I said, oh, it's just a small town, Pikeville, Kentucky. And he says, uh, have you ever ate at the three-way? And I'm like, the three-way drive-in? And he said, uh, so I don't want to ask you something else. Is it pronounced Marrowbone or Marbone? Oh, and I'm wow. like, we came all the way to Vegas to get married by Elvis, and he knows where the th- he's ate at the three way drive in. <laughs> Whoa! So he went on to tell us that his ex wife, who still owns the chapel that he works for, oh god, who lives in New York now, was from Wolf Pit, and uh, he called her and. They, they were really good to us. Oh, they? yeah, they were awesome. They gave us the video and picture package and everything, like, mm. on the house because we were from here, and it was just That's a cool, really man. Now, this isn't just a regular chapel. This is the Graceland Chapel. Bon yes. Jovi got married I was going to. Yes, I was going to yes. say, I thought I remembered something about Ace that. Ace Frehley, I think. Ace Frehley. This yeah. is, like, there the most celebrities. well-known wedding chapel in America, and the owner grew up and the Wolf Pit Branch of Marbone. I have a lot of questions about him with that relationship with his wife. That's a, whoa. Yeah, <laughs> but it's good that they got it figured out, though. It sounds right. like they have yeah, a good thing still going. friends. Like, he <clears throat> called her up, you know, while we were there and said, well, you're not going to believe this, but we got a couple here from Elkhorn City getting renewing their vows. And ah, they're probably making so much money, they don't care. <laughs> yeah, they, 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 don't, they don't care. I bet they had 30 or 40 limos outside. Yeah. So, so is this something that, uh, excuse me, <clears throat> Is this something you had to talk your wife into? This is something I would she have to talk my wife into. She, no. So I knew our anniversary was coming up, and we had already planned a trip out to Vegas. So I called Mark, and I said, Mark, I need you to find me an Elvis to marry me and Jennifer again, you know, to renew everything. So he calls me back and had the limo set up, and she knew nothing about it. Oh, wow. She didn't to the when the limo pulled up in front of the – Casino is when she found out that we were doing it. Ah, you so. romantic dog, <laughs> you look at you. I'm man. about ready to elope with him myself. If you called me, honey, I don't know, man. There, there might be something there. Hey, I'll take you to Vegas. <laughs> Vegas and a limo trip. <laughs> oh, man. It's, it's cool, though, man. I, I wish I could talk my wife into doing something like that. I could say something like, hey, Bon Jovi was married here, and she'd be like, so she's like she likes all the poppy stuff like Justin Bieber right. and One mm-hmm. Direction, right. all right. that. Do, do y'all kind of get along with y'all's spouses that way? Do you like the same type of music, or is that just black and white? No. So, so my little lady Jasmine Adams loves Morgan Wallen. I am not a Morgan Wallen fan, <laughs> and and we butt heads constantly. What? what? And and the reason is is because Cover Me Up, written by Jason Isbell yeah. to his wife Amanda. This guy covers it, and he gets I didn't know that. all yes. the popularity. Everybody's mm-hmm. like, oh, have you heard Morgan Wallen's new song, Cover Me Up? Mm. I'm like, yeah. excuse me? And I correct everyone. And yes. I know I'm that guy Absolutely. when I do that. Yeah, and, and, nobody, and, everyone. and nobody cares, though, right. because like, I, I'm that guy, too. Whenever uh, I don't listen to him as much as I used to, but Colt Ford, uh, back in the day, whenever he was first getting big, I listened to him. Right. And uh, he had that Dirt Road Anthem song, mm-hmm. yes. and Jason Aldean covered that. And it blew up. Right. And I was that guy too. I'm like, oh, Colt Ford done that first. Right. And just nobody cared. They're like, just, has this this remix has ludicrous in it. Like, who's Colt Ford? <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah. Yes. 
But yeah, so I mean, but for the most part, she's she loves the pastime band. <laughs> yeah, that's all that matters. That's it. That's, that's all, all that matters. matters. She 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 can have these little um, twer- quirks, I guess you could say, with yeah. Morgan Wallen and and the new bro country age. But that's just something that you know. I just I can't. Yeah, I mean, like and you it, can only have so many songs about dirt roads and cold beers, and you would think and tailgates. You would you think, but them, them, them dudes, they they they'll they'll write another one. Yeah, <laughs> I know. right. I got a and, new truck and a new tailgate. Yeah. <laughs> but then you could have a song about side by sides. Yeah, 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 right. yeah that, that's going to be the new thing right there. Is all the side by sides. Well, uh, yeah, them things see, like that. on our album coming out on May twenty. <laughs> you have a song about side by sides. Yeah. The, title, the the title track is called "In These Parts" and it was written by Mark as his an attempt of a country song. But you'll hear it. <laughs> it's it's yeah. the heaviest song on the album. It, it is. In but fact, the lyrics is this country song, and we turn yeah. it into something heavier. But it, you know, that's, but the lyrics is definitely about here, right? Yeah, so know? it's yeah. it's about um, you know, giving hand, you know, hand ups instead of handouts. Yeah. You know, riding or side by side and coal mining. The song was written for this area right here. Cool man. But. It's probably the most rockish song that's on the album. Well, Title that, track. Yeah, the that parts. was his best attempt at a country song. Well, <laughs> I brought it to the band, and then I went away for a weekend. I come back, and I said, check this out. <laughs> Here's your country song. Yeah, and it is amazing. I mean, do, do you like this version more than what you way wrote? Way more, yeah. That's cool. I'm limited on my talent. I, I bring it to these guys. They're the talent, you know, and, and they take the song. To a whole new level. Yeah, yeah, well, how were we talking about covers earlier? Every once in a while, like, you'll have somebody cover a song, mm-hmm. and every once in a while, it's like a one out of ten thing. It's actually sometimes better than the original. Yeah. The, the, the perfect mm-hmm. example of that is Hurt by Johnny Cash. You know, Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, that's the best example. Even Nine Inch Nails, like, they won't perform Hurt anymore. Like, th- they say, like, we gave it to Johnny. Like, that's his song. Right. He, yeah. he he done it justice. Yeah, awesome. Yes, he did. Yeah. In his old age, and he still yeah, covered he it he and made awesome. it what it is. Oh, in the music video, too, where it's uh, oh, him and June, you know, and that, and that was just a few months before she passed away. Yeah. And, oh, man. And it's going through his life. That mu- if. If that doesn't make you cry, or at least get a little bit emotional, you don't have a soul. Yeah, you can't put any right. more no. emotion into something than that. No. no. Uh, and, and what a way to, you know, sum up his life. I mean, Nine Inch Nails, I, I know they wrote it with everything that they had going on in their own life, but, man, they wrote that for Johnny. Yeah. That was, it was perfect. It was yes, perfect. It was. Yes, it was. I think that's what a great song's about, too, is, you know, they wrote it about their life, but it was his life, too. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Right, so you know, you, you hear that song, and you're like, man, I could have wrote that song. You know, it could be any one song out there, and whenever you have that feeling, man, I could write this. Yeah. That's it what just, I said about Elkhorn City. I said that's everybody that's ever left a small town and went mm-hmm. to a big city and missed home, you know, yeah. and that <clears throat> song would fit so many people. Oh, know? yeah, see, that that's what I loved so much about it. I was just sitting there listening to the lyrics, and I was relating so much. See, that's what I love about y'all's music is it's so relatable. You're not just trying to make a hit. You're telling stories. Exactly. You know, and right. your, or your point of view on things. And it's whenever you can relate to a song like that, it makes it more than just a cool song. It makes it more of an experience almost. It touches you. Yeah. And, that, and that's that's yeah. that's... that's that's what I love. Well, that's what really got me into music was how it touched me and how I related to these artists and the stories that they would tell. And oftentimes, somebody may go through something and have nobody to relate to. So whenever you hear a song and somebody's singing about that, you finally have that person. And it's a really beautiful thing. Like how y'all were talking about writing uh, Elkhorn City, and you're like, what did you see? Yeah, That's a great way to go about writing a song. It's, it's so simplistic. But it's, I, I think that's a great way to go about it. Lost Souls, another good example. That's a song that you get as much out of the melody line on the lead guitar as you do the lyrics, and they're mm-hmm. both powerful. Yeah. Right. You know, yeah, so. Rich wrote Lost Soul, and I will go to my grave, and I will die on this mountain that Lost Soul is my favorite song that we perform. Good Just one. because. Yeah, it, we end it, our shows with that one. Right. I feel it. I mean, like, like Mark said, it's not just the lyrics. It's not this. I mean, the... It, it's a power ballad, baby. It's yeah. a it's it's one of those you know straight power ballads, but like he said, you get as much emotion out of the guitar solos as you do the words of the song, yeah. and and I've never not gotten chills or that that warm feeling inside 
performing this song. Yeah. I've never not gotten it. Yeah. And, and sometimes some of those songs, too, like you can only listen to a little bit. You know, like uh-huh. it's almost too real that you're like, you kind of got to give yourself a break. It's yeah. something could be too real. <clears throat> and it's, yeah. and it's and that, universal. Those songs are from a real place. Right. Yeah, I mean, that lost soul, man. It's, it's heavy, but I think that songs like that mm-hmm. serve a purpose. And you never know. You could change somebody's life with a tune like that, mm-hmm. especially with... What that what 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 you're you're talking about in that song? I don't sure. want to dive into the specifics, but people know, you yeah. know. And, and all the great songs are songs about me and you. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, yeah. You know, and, and that one and that one. Yeah, that, that's why like, I listen to this pop music nowadays, yeah. and they're talking about fancy cars or a lot of girls or a lot of money, and I'm like, I don't have any of that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I can't relate to this at all. Yeah, I can't yeah. relate to that. And I, you yeah. know, when I was growing up. Like I didn't really care about the hits that were on the radio. That that was by far not my favorite music. I mean, I was a big Pink Floyd fan, and I prefer Hey You over Another Brick in the Wall a yeah. hundred times over. And that's yeah. kind of just well, carries out through what we do, you know. Yeah, I wish I was ignorant enough to like the hits of people, but I, uh-huh. but I love music so much that like. See, I, I'm that way with Led Zeppelin. See, like, Stairway sure. to Heaven is one of my least favorite songs sure. by Led yeah. Zeppelin. I, I can listen to Ramble On and Good Times, Bad Times. I'll listen to them way before I'll yeah. listen to that. Yeah. Right. And But, yeah, it's just, and it, it's to each and everybody's preference. But you have a lot of people that like them hits, and I'm just, I'm kind of the same way. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. not one of those now, I would guys. jam down to some hits. Yeah, me I mean, too. I don't yeah. dislike you, them. You throw me some 90s Mark Chestnut I mean, I'm your guy. I'm saying, yeah. Like, yeah, let's do this, killing time. But I'm also the B-side, songs that you've never heard of by artists that you've never heard of. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sitting there singing every word to, just because that's where I get my feeling. Now, the the fun comes from, you know, the big hits. Sure. But yeah. like whenever I'm, when I, I want to feel who James is, I dig down deep to these songs that no one knows. Exactly. And that's where like I get that lost. your shirt right there. Jason yeah, Hispel. great example of that. See, that the B-sides or the non-hits, those are the ones oftentimes that the artist wrote, and like that's the ones that they like. The hits are the ones that the label said, like, you need to be relatable, you need to sing about this, it needs to be this long, it needs to have this sound, and it's going to be a hit. And it is. They, yeah. they know what they're doing with that. Mm-hmm. But oftentimes, maybe that's not what the artist wanted to sing about in the first place. Case in point, George Jones, he stopped loving her today. Biggest hit he's ever had. Did not want to record it. Did not want to sing that song. Wow. Said it's the worst song he's ever heard in his life. And his is you know executives are like, no, listen, this is a hit. George, you got to sing this. And he's like, I don't want to. Now I don't know how long they fought back and forth on it, but I just know that initially he didn't want to do it. Wow. They and, probably just had to get him drunk enough. And now <laughs> I couldn't imagine George Jones <laughs> without <laughs> he stopped loving her today. Wow. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's crazy. I heard the same thing with Kanye and Gold Digger. Apparently, that's like one of his least favorite songs, but that's the one everybody knows that's him it. by. It it's funny how that happens. Yep. Have, has that happened to y'all with like songs, like songs that you didn't think was going to do as good? That's the one that kind of gets most popular. Have you ever had instances like that? Well, I, I think it's a double bonus if you write something that you really felt and then it becomes a hit, you know? Mm, right. And <clears throat> we're pretty new in this. We're just now getting ready to release the album. So uh, we'll kind of see how all that goes, you know? Everything locally has been pretty good so far that we've released. Uh, been accepted pretty good. Right, we've got, yeah. we've got a lot of good feedback on it. I know? always yeah. say that at one time or another, every one of our songs was my favorite. Ah, I like that. You know, I like that. I'll go for a while where that's my favorite right now, and I'll just listen to that a lot, and then, and then as we come up with new stuff, that'll mm-hmm. be my new favorite. <laughs> well, it seems like y'all have been gaining a bunch of traction here in the last year. I mean, despite everything that's happened, y'all have won the best band. I've seen well, that. Congratulations, we, we come in dudes. second. Oh, you came in second. Let me, let me, let me. I got to tell you the story. <clears throat> so go ahead. We come in second, and I'm okay with coming in second. Okay. Because whenever. And I'm not knocking the the nominations or anything like that because it was up to the fans to nominate who they wanted to. Yeah. We didn't even know that we were nominated for it until I was looking at the list. I was like, holy cow, we're on here. Yeah. Uh, but they also nominated Tyler Childers. I seen that. And then you label him as a local act yeah. who has sold out Rupp. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and the Appalachian Wilds Arena three, three times. Three times yeah. in a row. Yeah. Yeah. I'll take second place to that all day long. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, it was I, our honor. Yeah, I, I, I seen that, and I was kind of scratching my head on that one, too. I guess he is local, but Chris Stapleton's also local. Dwight yes, Yoakum's also yes, local. Yes, yeah. I mean, like, yeah. let's give some other people some chances. Those right. guys uh-huh. are doing pretty good. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but, no, I mean, we'll take second place with open arms. We Absolutely. love it. Just, just the fact that we got recognized yeah. and someone <laughs> thought enough of us to nominate us. Like, so without our knowledge. Man. Oh, yeah, it's a it's, fantastic feeling. See, I, I used to hate on award shows, man. I was that type of guy that's like, who cares about the Grammys? Who cares about the Oscars? And to a certain point, I still am. But um, I, I was nominated for uh, Best DJ there at the uh, Appalachian Arts and Entertainment Awards, and I I realized it. I'm like, that's that's a good feeling. Right. Even, yeah. though, I, even though I didn't win, it was still a good feeling. I'm like, dang, it just it makes it worth it. It feels uh-huh. like it's worth it. Just and, knowing and, and, that your and, name was put out there with all these other names. Yeah. Well, you know, and it's, and, and, and you're and putting it, a product out there that people like. Yeah. And, I mean, and that, it just, that's the main thing. I mean, you, you do this because you want people to like what you do. Yeah. And, I mean, and, if you're an entertainer. Yeah. And so <laughs> yeah. many times you're just putting in so many hours and so many sleepless yeah. nights and tears, blood, hard work. And just to see your name on a website right. or a piece of paper, it just it gives you such a good feeling. So I get it now. It's, I it's get it. The, the, the award is the feeling of being appreciated. Yeah. It's not like, you know, maybe at the Grammy level, it's something to gloat about. But like with us, it's just like, all right, we're glad somebody appreciates what right. we're doing. That's you know, why we're doing this. Especially yeah. coming off of a year like 2020. Yeah, exactly. To where we had no shows. <laughs> you know, we had, I mean, we, we had a full schedule going into it. And yeah. then one by one, they got picked off due to like the closures and, and yeah. limitations and all that good stuff. Um, but we decided then there's no better time to write and to crank out originals mm-hmm. than right now. We're, we don't have to practice for our show that's coming up in June because it's not happening. Yeah. So let's write. And seeing the, the feedback from our fans and our followers makes it worth mm-hmm. it going on such a lackluster year for shows but we turned that negative into one of the biggest positives so far and we've written enough that we've got an album now and the album's coming out soon that's awesome have y'all uh, came up with the name for it yet in these parts mm. title track written by <clears throat> mark his country song <clears throat> oh yeah 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 no, yeah I seen the uh, the album art that y'all released just a few weeks back with the the dots on the thing trying to be a little bit mysterious. I I, I like it, right. but it's, it's it's good, man. Where'd y'all come up with the album art? Um, so the the logo on the front, Rich designed with like just playing around some fonts. Yeah. Uh, the back we actually got Jake Ratliff, who is the drummer of multiple bands. Oh yeah, um, man, I love Jake. Mirrored Image. Yeah. He he done the back art for us. Helping Shout us out. out and I tell you how, the, how the front and the and the logo and things came about actually was we were going to buy a bass drum head, you know, with the band name on it to have. And one of my best friends since I was five probably is also a drummer. And he's also in the U.S. Army. In fact, he just got promoted to colonel this oh, week. Nice. And I called him. I was like, I need a bass drum cover because he fools with all the art, you know, and things like that. And he actually came up with it and sent it to us, and we liked it so much, we were like, well, I think this needs to be the album cover. That's it. <laughs> and it's also the T-shirts and the, the koozies, koozies and the yeah. stickers. Well, and that right there is going to help, man, because it's, yeah. it, it keeps it simple, and, you know, it's a it's a good thing that y'all have going on. The yeah. colonel in the Army, good for him. Yeah, yeah. he's awesome. Yeah. That's he's just great. He is a great guy. It's pretty badass. I mean, like, yeah, your album art was designed by a colonel in the Army. Yes. That's pretty awesome. Yes. Rob That's, Rowe. Yeah, he played drums. Oh, that's such a good name, too. He was, what, 14? You guys were 14? Yeah. And when we first started playing music. And, right. he and was, I played in a band with him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we've, we've, all, we've all been around. Yeah, right. lifelong friends. I'm a little younger neighbors. than these guys, so I've not played in a band <laughs> with him. Uh, <laughs> but you you may get to jam some with him. But I know he's a great drummer. I do yeah. know oh, that. Oh, he is. He's it, awesome. Well, speaking we've picked about, up <clears> a different drummer since... Uh, since the last time we were here. Oh, who's the? Uh, oh, yeah, because there's Stiltner. two. Uh, there's yeah, two people two that are not here today. Right. So we got Randy Stiltner from Ash Camp as playing drums right now. Randy's played drums nearly all of his life. Um, Kenny played with him in a band called Scanner back in the seventies. Yeah, well, I played in a band with him called Water Branch when we were like we started. We were ten years old. Right. Scanner so, and Water Branch. We, Those we are some played, good band We played our yeah. first show. I was thirteen. He was fourteen. 
and the bass player, I played guitar at that time, and the bass player was 15. Our parents drove us everywhere we went. We played at the Moose Lodge over in Hayside Bar. <laughs> <Whoa. You know? laughs> Actually, like Kenny and Randy was in Scanner when we were teenagers, and they were like rock stars to us. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you should have seen their setup. You know, they had walls of speakers, you know, when they'd set up to do a show, and, and they were good. That's, that's one thing I love about this area, man, <laughs> is how everybody plays together. Of course, they do it a lot nowadays, but it's been like that since way back in the day, you know? Right. It's, it's great to hear stories like that. Very I, little band rivals. Yeah, you know, we, man. We're all supporters of each other. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and, and yeah. That's, yeah. That, that helps so much. Right. Because yes. whenever you get in, whenever you start getting competitive, and you start trying to bring each other down yeah. or not share each right. other's stuff or whatever. Right. There's nothing All, to gain. Yeah. No, no, you're just fighting fire with fire, basically. Everybody's mm -hmm. just going to get burned in the long run. And yeah. then our lead guitarist, who's not here, is James Hamilton from Greasy Creek. And there's a lot of talent come off of Greasy Creek. James Hamilton. Dang, that sounds familiar. Shout out to James Hamilton. Cool yeah. name. Very cool name. He's a cool dude. Yeah. Yes. He's got some cool guitars. Yeah. yeah. A lot of cool guitars. A lot of cool guitars. My, my favorite guitar was always the uh, Les Paul Sunburst. Like the Jimmy Page style, that was all, or Slash, that was always my favorite. James has about eight Les right. Pauls. Yes. <laughs> Jesus. And he's got, I thought it was like eight guitars, and, but not yeah. just eight Les Pauls. And he's got yeah, just like Les Pauls. Firebird four Marshall, four that he Marshall plays, and, oh. which is um, basically Ricky Medlock. He played the Explorer, I do believe, but the Firebird's kind of designed after that. And James, when you watch this, just know that that is your favorite guitar that I, that you play that I want you to play forever. It's our forever. favorite guitar that <laughs> yeah. he plays anyway. <laughs> yeah, but man, y'all have been killed. And I see that uh, you have a lot of shows coming up as well, too, which is it's always awesome to see. We do. Um, Sunday, the 23rd, is going to be our busy, busy day. Do you um, have two shows going on? We got on. two shows that day from 12 to 3 at the Harley, uh, Mineshaft Harley-Davidson. I'm going to play there. It's supposed to be like a fun day with inflatables, car shows, all that good stuff. It's going to be a good time. Yeah. Um, and then we're going to pack up there and drive straight to Mouthcard for a benefit for Tally Aldridge to, to help raise money with expenses, you know, going to and from, like, the hospital, mm -hmm. medical expenses. It's going to be a fun time. I think yeah. that starts at 2 and goes until we get done playing. So we're thinking around 8 it might last. So we'll have some great people there. A lot. Dave Adkins is going to be playing there. Uh, wow. Johnny Pop Day. I mean, there's going to be a star-studded lineup of talent there, and it's all free. That's Come cool, there, man. donate, I mean, do whatever you can do. Yeah, just help the family. That's it. Yeah, uh, for the people that want to know more information about that, y'all shared a link about it on y'all's Facebook page. And, yeah, it's, it's heartbreaking to hear stories like that, but it seems here lately music, local music, has been helping out people in bad situations all around. <laughs> uh, the uh, Technicolor Nightmare, they done that one live stream to help raise money for a UK hospital. Right. Uh, Kicking on the creek, they done the whole flood relief thing going on there. Right. And with y'all doing something like this with Johnny Pop Day and the rest of them, it's just, it shows you how powerful music is. Right. You know, yeah. we just got done doing the, uh, the Best in the Mountain Showcase, which is to benefit the Shriners. Yeah. And our very first gig as a band together back in 2000 and I think it's 2019 uh, yeah. was a fundraiser for uh, Kaylee Peters in Elkhorn, you know, yeah. um, to, to help her out. And so, I mean, we've, we've always been the band to try to help out. We would like to do community. them all. It's just, right. You yeah. know, if we they, could, we would. They first reached out to us about doing it. And I was like, ah, we we already booked that day. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But me and Rich talked about it. Rich thought about it. I thought about it. And it really killed us not to do it. And I'm yeah. like, you know. Can't say no to a face We've like got that. our health. You know, we can, we've got the ability to walk up on stage and play and walk off. And this little girl doesn't have that. You yeah. know, she, she doesn't have the health that every other kid has. Yeah. And so what's it going to hurt us to be a little bit more tired at the end of that day? Work a mm. little harder. Work a little harder just to help whenever there's nothing else to you know that we could do. That's such a beautiful mindset to have. And that, that's a mindset that you're not going to find a lot in those big cities that we were exactly. talking about earlier. You know, you ain't going to find a mindset like that in Las Vegas. No, no it's not going to happen. And that's, that's the beautiful thing about these mountains. I mean, every musician out there, I don't care if it's solo, I don't care if it's full band, I don't care if it's, you know, Johnson County, Floyd County, Pike County, they're all to help. And mm -hmm. they, they're, they're standing and willing to, to do whatever it takes. Yeah. It's a little of no recognition and no pay. And that that just it I'm so proud to be a part of something so great in this area.
I'm happy you moved back, man. That is, <clears throat> it's it's a good thing, and you know we I, are too. <laughs> I, I've, I've thought about leaving this area before, but I can't see myself doing it now. Especially after last year, I realized, you know, like whenever I seen all the big cities going crazy and just in pandemonium, right. basically, I was like, man, how lucky we are mm-hmm. to have these mountains. Mm-hmm. As it, it, it's it's like a it's like a little shelter, you know, like they protect us from really everything is. that's right. from outside these mountains. It's uh, you know when you when you compare East Kentucky, Pikeville, Elkhorn City to these big cities, they have nothing, but at the same time they have everything. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, you you just have to be simplistic. So many people want to go out to all these bars on the weekend and just I, I know the big cities have a lot of stuff to do, but I find so much more joy in just finding a quiet riverbank to sit beside. Sure. You no, know, cranking up some music, maybe having a cold, whatever. Right. You know, yeah. just and, and you, good luck doing that in Minneapolis or even Lexington. You yeah. know, oh. but yeah, like like sometimes I've had to stay in Lexington for it. I want to kind of get away from the busy part of town, and you can't. There's there's no no escape. Pops up everywhere. It takes three everywhere. light changes to get through. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. Exactly. Like yeah, like I was saying, driving through Coal Run gets me enough. But even around here in Pikeville, you know, it, I, I first moved here from Phelps. And in a place like, are y'all familiar with Phelps? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, a place yeah. like that, you want to have freedom, you have freedom over yeah. there. <laughs> you can do whatever you want, basically. We had two cops. And one was like, one was in the part of town, and the other one was like a 10-minute drive. So, I mean, you were good. People ride four-wheelers over there. I lived right beside the bank multiple times a day. I would see people go through the bank drive through on a four-wheeler. Like, they'd be making deposits on their side-by-side. You know, I'm just like, that's a beautiful thing right there. That's, that's why the way I love... it is in Elkhorn. I drive yeah, you that's, that's the way it should be. That no, nobody ever says a word to you. Oh, I, I've went across Big Creek Mountain mm-hmm. into Elkhorn plenty of times from Phelps' side. Yeah. See, Elkhorn City, we're trying to embrace the trail town mentality. Yeah, and a lot of places are doing that, and I think that'll help a lot, man, because, especially with money. Because Elkhorn City has got some of the best trailheads, and you can get almost to any trail there is to ride from, from Elkhorn. Yeah. yeah. And so it's like the center point. And, I mean, it's just a beautiful thing. I mean, you, you go out there and you see more Razors than you do F-150s. And you're like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're driving by Hank Jr.'s Blair. And you're like, this is heaven, man. This is it. Well, you, you go up there on the weekend, and you'll see more side-by-sides in town you will be here. Wow. That's yeah. well, I mean, that's it, just it, it it's, it's beginning to be such a big thing. I It, it exploded, man. It's five years ago, you, you've seen some side-by-sides, right. but some. Nowadays, they are everywhere. See, those some people back in five years ago knew how much fun it was. The other people were oblivious to it. Yeah. They and were they still. Went, and I, then they got hooked. Yeah. Can you do a hill climb in a side by side? I'd say so. Hold my beer. Oh, my yeah, by, by yeah. God, yeah. yeah, I'm not, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my son, find out. He's, which he's James's age, my youngest son's James's age. And we've been going through the mountains, and he'll see us side this. He'll climb, you know, and, yeah. and he'll start that way. And I say, oh, no, son. No, we're not going. <laughs> oh, yeah, we are, too. Bam, right up to the top. <laughs> and 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 <laughs> I love it, man. I love doing hill climbs. About killed me one time. But you, you learn from experiences like that, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The only thing that saved me, man, was uh, I had a little back seat on my four-wheeler. And uh, I was coming back down the hill and just caught a rock, man. And the four-wheeler started tipping over. <laughs> And I couldn't jump to the side. I landed right there in front of it. And the uh, handlebars went right there. And the back of that seat is elevated a little bit. Yeah. And it landed right here and just made the perfect, it just went over me perfectly. Right. And, man, that was a close call. But I was still on it the next well, day. You can turn right. the side of the sides over, but it's, they're twice more safer than, oh, a, yeah. than a four-wheeler. Well, I see and they pe- will actually go places. A lot of times that a four wheeler won't because because you can't flip them backwards. Exactly. I mean, they, they, they'll go right on. Yeah, and, and, and I see they uh, some of these razors have like uh, roll cages too and yeah. stuff like that. Right. I mean, they really soup them up nice. Yeah. They're just a little bit of money, right? Yeah. 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 That, that's why right. a lot yeah. of bit of money. Yeah. But you know, I mean, the razors and the side sides are such an influential part of Elkhorn that you know, whenever we Mark sat down and wrote that song, we we had to mention it because that's who we are yeah. in these parts. Yes. You know, we, it, we do this and we do that and we do this in these parts. And it's, and it's a beautiful thing. And people just, they don't get it. It's a total, 
That, that's why I think that uh, the trail system will actually do great around yes. here. And I know they're talking about uh, connecting all of the parts, even connecting it to the uh, Hatfield-McCoy Trail mm-hmm. over there in the West Virginia part. And, heck, I've uh, whenever I was over there in the Phelps area, I would talk to certain riders that went over there, and you would hear from people come from different states, like all the way up in Philadelphia mm-hmm. or Georgia, just to ride yeah. these trails oh, around yeah. here. Yeah. So, I mean, this is a million dollar mm. industry oh, absolutely oh yeah yeah, yeah it's, it's a million dollar industry just buying the razors okay <laughs> them, thing, them <laughs> things them things are some of them are just as expensive as a car mm-hmm. see yeah. i i was thinking i seen them i'm like oh, that's probably about five ten grand you know maybe, maybe something like that maybe 15 if you want a nice one shoot <laughs> that's clearance yeah, <laughs> that's that's it. It. there's you probably really something is. wrong that's, with that's it if you're getting for that <laughs> yeah. that's it but i love them man i love them what do y'all uh, got planned for this year i know you got the album release i know you got shows so, is there any other goals that y'all have as a band um continue writing continue cranking out originals and hopefully have our second album ready to go this time next year that's oh dang goal. but back to the album release um may 22nd uh saturday night Buffalo Wild Wings in Pikeville. From 7 to 9, we've got the, the garage door side of B-Dubs rented out. Are you talking about like uh, it has the big, like, well, like a bunch of TVs in the back? Right, the big party the side. Yeah. yeah, the big party so side. So we've yeah. got that rented out. Uh, anybody that's listening. Has there ever been a band performing there? Well, we're not performing. So that's the beauty of it. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> we're just going cool. to sit there and we're going to drink our beverages and eat our food. And at this point, we get to mingle with our fans. And we get to mingle with our followers while they still hear our music. Because what we're going to do, we're going to play our album in the entirety from start to finish over the loudspeakers. Nice, man. And we're going to have, that'll be the first opportunity to buy a hard copy of our Because Hmm. we're having the album release party prior to the actual release of the album. So it's going to be the the first and quickest way to get a hard copy of it. We'll be there. Uh, Free of charge. Everyone's invited. Uh, love nice, to see man. you there. Hell yeah. If you're out there listening, swing by Absolutely. seven to nine, drink Everyone a cold beer. Welcome. Yeah, dude, I'm like a two minute drive away from there, right. so I'm there. And so I'm we'll there. have t-shirts, koozies, stickers, albums. We'll have cake. Nice, um, dude. So yeah, swing by. It's gonna be a fun time, yes. man. Hey, Buffalo Wild Wings, best tater wedges on earth, man. <laughs> tater wedges are gospel. Bomb. That is gospel. Yeah, <laughs> man. People don't know. But and that's a unique place to have a listening party too. I mean, everybody likes beat ups, mm-hmm. right? And so. Rich was the mastermind behind this, you know, and and we're driven, I guess, as a band to always gain more followers. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we could rent out a community park or a community shelter and have that. But then at that point, it's going to be the people who decide they want to drive there to come to the party. Why not go to one of the most happening places that's already going to be packed, Mm -hmm. regardless of what's going on, and have it there? That way... They could be a virgin ear out there that's never heard us and say, hey, I like that. Come over here, and then boom, we've gained a fan. Yeah, we're just hoping if you're at B-Dubs, you know, just having dinner that night, and you see the banner or hear us, just come over and visit for a little while. And children's welcome. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be a family. I mean, you know, it should be great for everyone. All ages. Man, that is a smart way to go about it. He got it. a head like a cutworm on him. Hey, it's <laughs> pretty too. Yeah. The reason that head is so big. That yeah. I wish you yeah. put that thing on dim. <laughs> <laughs> but, but after that, uh, in June, June eighteenth, we're doing Main Street Live. Yeah, that's. I, I seen they finally uh, got a chance to bring that back, and man, right. that's awesome. Yeah. So down at the uh, the Appalachian Wireless Arena outdoor stage, the Mountaintop Media stage. We'll, I think we're going to be playing there for four hours. Um, it'd be another chance to swing by, watch us, have some fun, buy some merch. Yeah. Four hours straight? Well, no, well, I'm okay. sure we'll have breaks. But okay. it's I was be about four to say, hours. like, dang, boy. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's almost four hours straight. And probably yeah. a 15 minute break right. in between. Wow. We'll play four sets. Yeah. yeah. Man, as a comic, it blows my mind that y'all do like four hours. Listen, yes. it blows mine too. <laughs> it's a long time. <laughs> do, to does, play. It, does it go by fast? Or does it oh, sometimes yeah. seem like yeah. four I mean, hours? Yeah, blink of an Whenever eye. we yeah. go up on stage, that instantly turns however crappy of a day that you've had into yeah. the best day so far. I mean, just just the, I don't know, like the the feeling that you get when you walk on stage. And I don't care if there's three people out there, you know, I that getting on stage and being able to perform, doing what I love, 
makes any bad day great. And the four hours go by like 30 minutes. It's only now, four hours now. When you actually do it, it doesn't seem like right, four no. hours yeah. anything. But now, me being the mouth of the band, you know, my throat <laughs> starts feeling it about three hours and 50 minutes in. Do, do you drink lemon juice or anything? Miller we'll call, right, it, we'll call it lemon juice. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, guys, it's a cocktail. <laughs> right. Guys, I'm so proud of y'all, man. It's, it's so awesome to see y'all doing so good despite how crappy last year was. And yeah, man, I, I'm excited about the new album. I'm excited about the listening party. I'll definitely be there. We'll awesome, we'll, 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 we'll have a good time. Yes, yeah, sir. definitely. Awesome. So for all the possible virgin ears out there who have never heard of the Pastime Band, tell everybody where they can go to to find your music, all the cool merch that you have, and all the shows that you have so coming. Any up. streaming app out there, whether Dude, it be y'all are on Napster. Right. I didn't know that was still around. <laughs> right. I seen y'all say, I'm like, they said they say Napster? Oh, yeah, we're on Napster. Y'all uh, on MySpace? <laughs> <laughs> we're on ICQ. <laughs> Let me tell you. Uh, but no, I mean, where where would you get your music? Apple, Spotify, Deezer, iHeartRadio, Pandora. We're there. Um, Facebook is facebook.com slash the pastime band. Instagram, we are pastime underscore band. Um, you can get on our Facebook page, send us a message to buy our merch, see all of our upcoming shows, and email and phone contacts for booking. Well, there you go, folks. And once again, Kenny, James, Richie, and Mark. I'm not going to worry about last names. There That's you so go. Good. Thank you all, boys. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. you. Yeah. Appreciate it. See you next week, folks. Oh.